Resource security and price volatility is an increasing concern for global businesses. The circular economy is increasingly cited by governments and institutions as presenting a huge economic opportunity for business. But unlocking this potential is not easy and requires a shift in design thinking and business practice. And so whilst there's many reports out there that talk about this opportunity, there's very little guidance on how to do it in practice. So we've been working with a number of companies to develop tools to help businesses move towards a circular or more circular economy. Working with Howie's, working with uh, P&G, we've been working with Samsung and we've been working with RS Components. And the idea has been to develop models that will work for them, but more importantly to extrapolate from those models so that we can develop tools that will work for you and for other companies within the UK. The teardown really helps businesses to understand their product. We literally rip apart their product using hammers and spudges and screwdrivers and create a lot of mess. In doing so, we find out how long it takes something to take apart, how easy it is to disassemble. We look at what is in it, what the materials are, what materials that are on the critical materials list. We look at the high value components and we assess its environmental life cycle impact. We also look at how long the product lasts and we try to understand what the failure mechanisms within the products are. And so the teardown really helps us to establish a profile of the product as it is. Very informative for when we're looking at redesign options. So after we've done all that, we've asked the right questions, we understand what the problems are, we have to redesign, we have to design up. Now the nirvana of redesign is to make products that last an inordinate amount of time. But that challenges business models. So part of the design up process is to assess the way that we make money and the way that can, companies can continue to make money but keep consumers really, really happy. In some cases, by making things simpler, we make them last longer and we make consumers love them more. We're really interested in, in how these models affect the way that companies work. So we've looked at a leasing model for white goods. In the UK, everyone owns their washing machines. In Amsterdam, in the States, in a whole load of other countries. These things aren't owned. People will use the service. So can we develop a business model that looks at selling the service rather than the product, but still give us the convenience of having the product in our home? And can we do that in isolation from the detergent manufacturers? No, we can't. We need to join those, those loops together. What's clear in working with the business is that they can't do this on their own. There's a need to establish um, partnerships, particularly with waste recovery facilities, the logistics of collecting that material back into their system. So there is a need for businesses to collaborate. It's for each material system, there's going to be a tipping point when the resource cost becomes a driver for circularity and businesses really need to be prepared for that shift.